the last session of today. Uh, the first speaker is Miguel Angel Mota from Vietnam, Mexico, and will speak on symmetries. Uh, thanks for this wonderful invitation. Uh, let me start with a uh, historical introduction. Uh, well, as you probably know, the method of side condition was invented by Stevo Todorcevic, and it describes a style of forcing in which elementary substructures are included in the conditions of a force imposed in order to ensure properness, and therefore in order to uh, preserve o omega 1. Uh, let me recall some basic definitions. If we have a pose set and a condition Q living in P, and we have a, a countable elementary substructure of H theta, then we say that K, uh, Q is said to be NP generic if and only if Q forces that uh, the generic filter, well, I'm going to give this definition. If and only if uh, for every time subset D of P belonging to N, the intersection N is presents pre below Q which means that the generic filter, any generic filter containing Q, is going to intersect the uh, intersection N. And something stronger is uh, this second definition, thus that Q is said to be strongly NP generic if and only for every dense subset D of P intersection uh, N, D is pre-dense below Q. And of course, uh, two implies one. Uh, that's because uh, by elementarity, if D is a dense subset of P and D and P, they are both elements of N, or they are both definable in N, then D intersection N is a dense subset of P intersection N. So if P is in N, then two implies one. Or if P is definable in N, then two implies one. And the second remark is that uh, if Q is strongly MP generic, then Q forces that N intersection G is a V generic filter on the countable set N intersection P. And therefore, we are, code, we are essentially coding a current real. So Q adds a current real. A typical condition of a forcing P equi equipped with a side condition is a pair XA, where X is an approximation to the desired uh, generic object. And A is a finite set of countable elementary substructures such that if N is in A, then the pair XA is MP generic. And Friedman and Mitchell independently took the first step in generalizing this method from adding generic objects of size omega 1 to adding larger objects by defining forcing posets with finite conditions for adding a club subset uh, of omega 2. And it was Niemann, the first one to simplify the side conditions of Friedman and uh, Mitchell by presenting a general framework for forcing on omega 2 with side conditions. The both the forcing poses of Friedman, Mitchell, and Niemann for adding a club of omega 2 with finite conditions, they all force that uh, the continuum is equal to omega 2. And that's because, in fact, all these um, forcings, they can be factored in many ways so that the quotient forcing <laughs> also has a strongly generic conditions in the intermediate extensions. So Friedman asked in 2005, I guess, uh, whether it's possible to add a club subset of omega-2 with finite conditions while preserving CH. And together with John Kruger, I solved this problem by defining a forcing poset which adds a club to a fat stationary set and falls in the class of coherent adequate type forcings. We proved that, of course, any coherent adequate forcing preserves CH. And moreover, we have something stronger. Uh, any coherent adequate forcing on H lambda, uh, that means that our side conditions are countable elementary substructures of H lambda, uh, collapses 2 to the omega to have size omega 1. But it preserves the successor of 2 to the omega and forces CH. Uh, this is the content of the first part of my talk. Uh, probably I'm very optimistic. Uh, in part two, I will explain my reference. Also, uh, I will try to explain my reference work with uh, William Weiss from uh, the University of Toronto. And in this case, we solve a well-known problem in the theory of compact sc scatter spaces and superatomic Boolean algebras by showing that under GCH and uh, for each regular cardinal kappa greater or equal than omega, 
uh, there is a posted P kappa preserving all cardinals and forcing the existence of a kappa team very tall, locally compact house door, uh, locally compact house door scatter space. And our result, of course, generalizes that of Baumgartner of Shella for kappa equals to omega. And uh, for kappa uh, strictly above, uh, yeah, for kappa uh, bigger than omega, we, um, we designed the posted P kappa as a higher analog of the posted P omega, uh, originally introduced by Aspero and Bagaria in the context of an unpublished alternative consistency proof from uh, 2000. Uh, that's, that proof is from September 2009, I guess. <laughs> and what's the connection between this? Oh, shit. Oh, sorry. Uh, what's the connection between these two parts? Uh, the connection between st uh, these two parts is a set theoretical notion of, sy of symmetry that I will explain throughout this talk. Uh, let me start with, uh, with the first part of the talk. Uh, I'm going to start explaining the notion of coherent adequate states. This development is due to Kruger. Uh, from now on, we assume that lambda uh, is a uh, cardinal, which is at least omega 2. Is a fixed cardinal of uncountable cofinality. And also, we fix a predicate uh, which we assume that calls a well ordering of H lambda. Uh, let X be the set of all countable elementary substructures of this H lambda together with the membership and uh, together with this uh, additional predicate. And let gamma be the set of all ordinals in omega 2 having uncountable cofinality. So if N is in X, then and is of course an element of H lambda. That's simply because lambda is uh, of uncountable cofinality, and gamma is definable in N. Uh, now we introduce a way to compare <coughs> members of X. <coughs> For M in X, for one of these uh, structures, uh, gamma n denotes the set of those betas having uncountable cofinality, such that beta is the minimum gamma is the minimum of gamma minus the supremum of m intersection beta. Uh, I can give an um, alternative definition, uh, but wait, wait a minute. So for every uh, beta and gamma m, uh, there are no ordinals of uncountable cofinality in the open interval supremum of m intersection beta beta. Because remember that this is the minimum. This is the minimum gamma minus the supremum of m intersection beta. <coughs> and in particular, omega 1 is in gamma m. And since m is countable, the cardinality of gamma m is also countable. And gamma m is included in gamma n if m is included in n. Uh, if you have two of these uh, structures, then you can define the maximum of gamma uh, n intersection gamma n. And the main property here is that if m prime denotes all those ordinals of m intersection omega 2, together with those limit points of m, uh, the limit points coming from m intersection omega 2, then m prime intersection m prime is included in beta m n. And also, gamma m can be described as the set of all those ordinals beta such that beta is of the form gamma plus omega 1, where alpha is a... Uh, we don't see any yeah, of these different colored chalk. <coughs> white chalk. Uh, wait a minute, please. OK, white. <laughs> so gamma m is the set of all those ordinals beta 
such that beta is of the form alpha plus omega 1, where alpha is in n prime. This is not difficult to prove, <coughs> this, uh, this equality. And uh, yeah. And now we define uh, true relations. Uh, we define the relation of being of uh, less uh, less than an equivalent on x, uh, and we say that m is below n if m intersection uh, the com the comparison point of m and n uh, is in n, implying that. Uh, this beta mn is in n. This is simply because beta mn is defined as this minimum, uh, this minimum, and gamma is definable in x, and therefore is definable in all these elementary substructures living in x. And we say that m and n are equivalent if m intersection the comparison point uh, is equal to n intersection the comparison point. And then we say that m is less than or equal to n if either m is below n or m is equivalent to n. And of course, since the comparison point is uh, above omega 1, then if m is below n, then that implies that n intersection omega 1 is below n intersection omega 1. And if they are equivalent, that implies that they have the same height with respect to omega 1. <sighs> Sorry, can I ask you to show, go back just quickly? Of course. To the definition of, I missed the definition of beta. Which one? This definition of beta mn, okay. Yeah, that's the maximum of gamma uh, m intersection gamma m. And we say that a subset A of X, a subset of, uh, recall that this is a subset of elementary substructures. There are elementary substructures with respect to the membership and with respect to the additional predicate Y. And a subset A of X is adequate if and only if every two elements of A are comparable under this relation. And note that if A is finite and adequate, n is in x. Uh, OK, so this is the situation. Where is the razor? Sorry. Oh, yeah. So imagine that we have a subset set consisting of adequate, of adequate uh, structures and this subset lives in n a is finite so n has access to all the elements of a and therefore it has access to all the initial elements of each element of a therefore uh, a together with n this is also an adequate set is, is that a, you mean on uh, n where, where you write a is an guy Know that if a is final and adequate, n is in x. A is a sub. Probably I should say here that a is a subset of uh, yes. A is a subset of x. Uh, is finite and adequate. Yes. Then has n has access to all the initial <laughs> segments of each m in a. Yeah. Sorry. Sorry for the type. Uh, sorry. It means a is an n. A is a subset of X uh, consisting of, uh, of adequate uh, uh, structures. And next, we, defi we define the reminder points, which describe the overlap of models past uh, their comparison point. Mm -hmm. What do you mean by this that uh, N has access to the initial mm -hmm. segments well, of each? <coughs> yes. We, we Over here, A was an element of N, right? So. You agree with me that uh, uh, this is finite, this A, and uh, it, li it lives in N by assumption. Where, where a is, assumption? is in N. Yeah, that's what's missing. Oh, 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 oh. <laughs> <laughs> Not A is in X, but A is in N. 
Yeah. Oh, sorry. So, 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 so the right assumption. Right, it makes sense. Yeah. <laughs> now it makes sense. Thank you. Uh, yes. Now I'm going to define the reminder points, uh, which describe the overlap of model faster comparison points. And if m n is adequate, then the reminder points of n over m, denoted by r sub m n, is defined as the set of those beta satisfying that either n uh, is less than or equal to m, and beta is the minimum n, which is above beta m n, or uh, there is a gamma m which is not in beta m n, such that beta is the minimum of n minus gamma. Uh, this, is a this, this is a technical definition. Uh, the reminder is always finite, since otherwise there will be a common limit point of m and n, which is greater than, uh, the, comp uh, than the comparison point, but we have said that this is not possible. And given an adequate set uh, A, we define the reminder R sub A, which is the set of all the possible reminders coming from uh, structures uh, living in A. Uh, given S in omega 2 and an adequate A, A is said to be as adequate if uh, all these reminders, they live in S, which is quite natural. And then finally, we say that a final set is uh, said to be coherent as adequate if A, if S, if A is as adequate and A is symmetric style as per omota. What does it mean to be symmetric? So uh, imagine that we have two of these uh, structures living in X. Then uh, first of all, we say that they are strongly isomorphic if and only if, of course, there is an isomorphism between these two structures and this uh, isomorphism fixes m intersection m, which means that if <coughs> we have something in the intersection of m and n, then the image on their sigma is the, is the element itself. Yeah? Yes, being the identity on m intersection n. And note that in such a case, m intersection omega 1 is equal to n intersection <coughs> omega 1. Uh, so the exact definition of being coherent as adequate is, first of all, to be uh, as adequate, and then satisfying these uh, three rules describing symmetry. We say that if we have two structures in, in A which have the, the same height with respect to omega 1, then there is a unique strong isomorphism between these two structures. Uh, if we have a structure whose height with respect to omega 1 is smaller to uh, the height of this structure, then there exists another structure containing this one and of the same height. That's condition B. Uh, condition 3 is the dual of this condition, meaning that if we have two conditions of the same height and we have one living here, then the isomorphic image is also a part of A. Is that clear? W what is the strong isomorphism? Uh, that means that you fix the identity. Uh, that means that you fix M intersection N. That means that if you have X in M intersection N, then the image of X is X itself. Uh, now, uh, the rest of this talk is part of my, uh, the rest of this first part of my talk is showing work with uh, Kruger. And from now on, we fix uh, S subset of omega 2 such that S intersection, uh, those ordinals having cofinality omega 1 is stationary. And also, we fix Y stationary in H lambda omega, such that this Y <coughs> is closed on the isomorphism. What does it mean to be closed on the isomorphism? Exactly the same idea. If I have two structures in Y and I have a third one here, then 
this is also the image is also a, an, an element of Y. <laughs> and of course, by the Tarski Bau uh, test, the clap X is closer on the isomorphism. The clap S is uh, the set of those elementary substructures which are uh, correct with respect to uh, the membership and with respect to the predicate Y, which causes a well order. Uh, finally, we say that a posset P is said to be uh, uh, an SY coherent adequate type forcing if and only if its conditions are pairs XA such that X is a finite subset of H lambda. This is the approximation for, for an object that we want to add. A is a subset of Y and is coherent as adequate. This is a coherent as adequate set. Three. Uh, was three saying? Uh, huh? Oh yes. And but the, where is the eraser? Ah yes. Three is saying that imagine that we have a condition such that n and n prime they are both members of uh, of the side conditions associated. Uh, associated to, to this condition. <coughs> uh, and imagine that you have something living here, x a, which is smaller than the original, which is weaker than the original condition. Yes, and it lives in one of these. Then the conclusion is that the isomorphic image is also a condition, and this is a weaker condition than the original one. And uh, this is uh, thus I'm going to call this property symmetric. Uh, the fourth one is saying that imagine that you have a condition uh, living in, in, in the intersection of a coherent S adequate set, then there is a condition extending this, or uh, there is a second condition extending the original one such that all these models, they live in the part uh, of the side conditions, the stronger one. So I'm saying this. Imagine that this guy lives in the intersection of a set of adequate, uh, of um, is living in the intersection uh, of <coughs> a set of consisting <coughs> of ad ad adequate models. Then we can put all these models uh, to A, and then we uh, then we have a new condition. A kind of amalgamation. No? Sorry. It's a kind of amalgamation. Exactly. Exactly. And uh, finally, the last one is saying that. Of course, whenever we have a, an M in A, then the part XA has to be strongly MP generic. And so for that reason, we have that all these coherent adequate type forcings, they uh, add a lot of coin reals because we have uh, MP gen genericity. <laughs> but what we're going to see is that we add only a small number of new reals. We have on, we have only uh, omega one reals. Uh, okay, from now on, lambda is going to be uh, at least the successor of two to the omega. Of course, we continue with the assumption that the cofinality of lambda is at least omega one. And imagine that this is the first. Uh, this is the y first enumeration of the power set of, of omega, this enumeration of reals. So y codes the relation uh, set where set i m holds if and only if i is less than 2 to the omega and n is in the real r i. And the first lemma is saying that if you have two structures in X, since they are very correct with respect to, th to this predicate Y, 
then they have both the same reals. And this is, uh, this is because, remember, that if you have two structures of, of, of the same height, then they are isomorphic, yes? And imagine that the one you have one ordinal in 2 to the omega, then that, uh, we, we have the real r alpha, and then we have to see that this is equal to the real r uh, sigma m n alpha. But uh, that's going to happen essentially because both they are correct with respect to the predicate y. Are you assuming the continuum hypothesis? I'm not assuming any, I'm not assuming anything. I'm assuming ZFC. <laughs> and uh, for the same reason, essentially for the same reason, and since imagine now that you have, uh, imagine now that you have two structures. Uh, Yeah, meaning that you have two structures m and n. The height of n is bigger than the height of omega with respect to omega one. We know that there is an isomorphic copy of m living in n. So all the reals of m are also reals of n. So for that reason, we have that. Uh, for that reason we have that any SY coherent adequate poset collapses 2 to the omega 2 omega 1, because as we have omega 1 possible highs. And given two structures with the same high, they have exactly the same reals. And um, I don't know if I shall, should continue explaining this part. Probably yes. Uh, Okay, so I'm, uh, I'm going to give this lemma, but I'm not going to prove it because otherwise that's going to take a lot of time. Uh, imagine that you have a predicate of H lambda, you have a co an element of H lambda, uh, you have M and N living in Y satisfying that set is in both, in the intersection of M and N. M N is coherent as adequate. Uh, so we want to find M and N in Y satisfying this, this, these two things that set lives in the intersection. M, uh, the pair M N is coherent as adequate. The structures uh, are elementary in, with respect to the well order and with respect to the additional predicate R, and they are isomorphic. Uh, I should say strongly isomorphic. And there are alpha and beta, one in M and one in N, such that they are different, and the isomorphism sends alpha to beta. Uh, no, that's going to take a lot of time. So, um, so assume that assume that you, you that you can do that. That uh, you can always find this M <coughs> and N, which are correct with respect, which which are correct with respect to R such that the isomorphism sends alpha to beta, and such that it contains sets. Yeah. And using this lemma, uh, we prove that uh, if we have an SY coherent adequate poset, uh, imagine that P, force, that P forces that we have uh, how many reals, as many as the successor of 2 to the omega, then there is a condition Q uh, below, uh, is a, there is a condition Q extending <coughs> P and alpha uh, different from beta, such that Q forces that F alpha is equal to F beta. So the sketch of the proof is as follows. Uh, using the, the above lemma, um, we're going to use the above lemma. Uh, first define uh, R, this predicate by letting that 
uh, set i n m holes. If and only if set is in P and set forces that f i n is equal to m. And now we fix two of these structures in Y, satisfying that T is in the is in M intersection N. Uh, M N is coherent is adequate. The structures are isomorphic and they are they are in fact um, strongly isomorphic. And there are two different points, alpha and beta, such that the isomorphism sends alpha to beta. And now we are going to prove that uh, this condition uh, Now, now um, well, I know that uh, where is the eraser? So I have this P living in M and in N. And by one of the conditions of being coherent adequate pole set, I know that there is a, I, I know that th there is a condition having extending p and having an m and n as side as side conditions. Yes. As, uh, so this is this condition Q, such that m and n uh, belong to the side conditions of Q. And now we have to check that Q alpha and beta work. And this is essentially a symmetric argument. We have that the condition has M and N as side conditions. The isomorphism sends alpha to beta. And here we are coding the real F alpha. And here we have the real F beta. Yeah. Now we, ha we have, we have a, um, a, st a strongly uh, generic, gener generic condition. So we are going to prove that f alpha n is the same as f alpha m for all uh, uh, for f alpha n. F beta. Uh, f beta n. Yeah. <laughs> so um, this is this is quite simple because we have said that uh, m and n are side conditions, and uh, th th they are warranting um, uh, properness. So uh, imagine that we want to decide this value here. So there is a, uh, bec because, this be because we, we have um, genericity for m, then there is a condition here deciding this value. Yes? But then remember that the forcing is symmetric. So it has to decide exactly the same value. And that happens for all possible naturals. So the conclusion is that uh, these two naturals, they are exactly the same. And as a corollary, we have that uh, we know we already know that uh, any of these forces collapses uh, the continuum to omega one. It forces CH, uh, forces that the successor of two to the omega uh, in V is equal to omega two. We have to see only the last part. And imagine that this is not true that. Uh, P, imagine that P collapses the successor of 2 to the omega. Then, there is a, then uh, the successor of 2 to the omega has a cardinality omega 1. Then uh, this is possible to find a sequence of names. Uh, then there is a <coughs> sequence of names which P forces that there is an enumeration of omega 1 many distinct functions from omega to omega in order type, in this order type. But we have seen that this is impossible. And um, again, let us do a break. Uh, and I'm, I'm going to explain a, a little bit of history. Uh, prior to this work, Asperger and Mota proved that for any cardinal lambda of uncountable co cofinality, the lambda symmetric forcing consisting of finite symmetric systems of countable elementary substructure of H lambda ordered by reverse inclusion preserves uh, CH. And this forcing is one of the two forcings that they currently use in the first step of their finite support iterations for proving uh, a certain forcing action with a continuum large. And as we have said before, a symmetric system is similar to a coherent adequate set, 
except that it doesn't have the structure of, of being adequate. And by a result of Miyamoto from 2013, the lambda symmetric pole set, as well as any coherent adequate forcing on H lambda, adds an omega-1 tree with lambda many cofinal branches for any regular lambda. Uh, so we are adding, uh, uh, we are adding uh, Kurepa trees in all these forcing extensions. And uh, certainly the CH preservation ar argument of Asperger and Mota slightly intersects the CH preservation argument of Kruger and Mota, but the format uh, don't show how to force with side conditions together with another final set of objects to preserve CH. Uh, this may be an empirical e evidence that Kruger's adequacy is crucial for this kind con of construction, especially in the context of, of omega-2, when we want to add something to omega-2. Because in this way, we, we, we can compare elementary substructures of, of H omega 2. Uh, okay. And uh, as a corollary, um, we answer a question of, of side Friedman. And for that, let me recall the following definition. Recall that stationary set S uh, of omega 2 is said, is said to be fast if and only for every class of omega 2 S intersection C contains a closed subset with order type omega 1 plus 1. And as a corollary, we have assuming CH. Uh, if S uh, is fast stationary, then there is an SY coherent adequate P uh, forcing included in H omega 2 preserving omega 1, omega 2, CH, and uh, forcing that uh, S contains a class. And please note that this requirement is the minimum that we can ask since any class, uh, since if we have a class, then this class has to have uh, intersection with S at least omega 1 plus 1. I'm not going to give the forcing, rather, I'm going to the second part of my talk. Uh, so, in the second part of my talk, I promise that I would add. Uh, locally compact Hausdorff scatter space of high uh, of width kappa and of high kappa plus plus for every regular cardinal. If you don't know that, that's okay because I don't know neither all these topological definitions. But the good thing is that you can translate this problem in terms of partial orders. Um, so imagine that we have a, a reflexive transitive and anti-symmetric relation on kappa cross kappa plus plus. Um, the pole set kappa cross kappa plus plus is said to be uh, admissible if and only if the following uh, hold. Whenever you have alpha and beta is below alpha prime, beta prime, uh, then uh, that means that beta, uh, that implies that beta is an element of beta prime. Uh, for every beta in kappa plus plus and every alpha prime beta prime, in this is the situation. Uh, so imagine that you have something here, uh, alpha prime, beta prime, and you have one beta which is below beta prime, then there are infinite uh, pairs here, such that this pair is uh, below this pair. <coughs> uh, C, yes, C, uh, <laughs> when, 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 whenever, when, whenever you, you, you have two pairs, uh, then there is a finite subset B of kappa cross kappa plus plus called a barrier for this for for this for these two order pairs such that all the elements of B are below both and in such a way that whenever you have something which is below uh, these two points there is one element of the barrier if you have something which is below these two points, uh, uh, alpha, beta, yes, 
then there is an element of the barrier such that this element of the barrier is above this ordinal, above this uh, pair. Yes, and uh, the existence, <coughs> in fact, it's, it's, very, it's, it's very easy to consider a, a, a topology here. The topology that, that we consider is uh, by considering the, uh, the cones uh, generated by, 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 by this order and by declar declaring that these cones, they are clopens in, 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 the, in the topology. So if we, if we have that, then you can prove that you have a locally compact, locally compact house of scatter space. Yes? <coughs> And the theorem that we have here is that uh, assuming GCH, pleasure. Uh, for every regular cardinal kappa, there exists a posted P kappa such that P kappa is uh, less than kappa close, and therefore P kappa preserves all cardinals uh, at most kappa. Uh, P kappa is proper with respect to structures of cardinality kappa, and therefore P kappa preserves kappa plus. P kappa has the kappa plus plus chain condition and therefore P kappa preserves all cardinals being at least kappa plus plus. Therefore we have the preservation of all cardinals. Uh, P kappa forces the existence of a kappa kappa plus plus admissible pole set. And in order to describe this forcing, please let me introduce the following terminology. We will say that a set is of a small size if and only if its cardinality is below kappa. And a force imposed P is proper with respect to structures of cardinality kappa if and only for every sufficiently large regular cardinal lambda for every elementary substructure M of H lambda of size kappa containing P and closed on their small sequences. And for every condition P living in, the, in P intersection M, there is extension Q of P such that Q is MP generic. And a typical condition in this forcing notion P kappa can be described as a small approximation to the kappa, kappa plus plus admissible pole set together with a small symmetric system of structures of size kappa as side conditions. And so in order to be more precise, let me introduce the following notation. So remember that now we have structures of size kappa. Yeah. And therefore, it makes sense to consider the intersection with respect to um, kappa plus. And this is an ordinal in kappa plus. And I'm going to call this ordinal uh, delta n. This is the height with respect to kappa plus. Uh, so I'm going to give the definition of being symmetric, a symmetric system uh, in this more general context, imagine uh, that we have a predicate of, of H kappa plus plus, let mu be a cardinal, and let Ni uh, with I in mu be a small set, so mu has to be less, at, uh, less than kappa, consisting of subsets of H kappa plus plus, each of them of size kappa. We will say that this set is a T kappa symmetric system if and only if the following holds. Imagine that, uh, well, the first condition is saying that uh, each of these Ni's uh, is closed on their small sequences, and Ni is correct with respect to the membership, membership and with respect to T. Uh, there are elementary substructures of H kappa plus plus. Whenever we have two um, models, uh, with the same high, they have to be strongly isomorphic. Uh, whenever you have 
two models, one of a smaller height, you have another having this height and containing this guy. And the fourth one, the fourth condition is saying that this is close on their uh, isomorphism. <coughs> and the fourth thing that we are going to, to consider is, first of all, fix a bijection between kappa plus plus and h kappa plus plus. This is possible because we're assuming um, DCH. Uh, conditions in P kappa are sequences of the form, uh, first, an approximation to the partial order, second, an approximation to the barrier function, third, that's going to be a symmetric system, and the fourth condition, that's going to be a subset of the uh, symmetric system. So one, the first condition is saying that uh, this is a small reflexive transitive and anti-symmetric anti relation uh, uh, satisfying the first clause of admissibility. The first clause, remember, is saying that if alpha is less, alpha beta is less than alpha prime, beta prime, then beta is below beta prime. Uh, the second one is saying that VQ is a variable function whose domain is uh, equal to the set of all pairs uh, coming from the domain of this partial order. The third one is saying that uh, this is a symmetric system. The fourth one is saying that uh, delta Q um, is saying that omega Q is included in delta Q, where delta Q is our symmetric system. And um, the most important thing is that when something belongs to uh, omega Q, that means that this is an active uh, side condition. And therefore, whenever you, uh, we want to guarantee properness for these side conditions living in omega Q. Therefore, whenever you have two elements, uh, two elements of the partial order, which lives in N and N is in omega Q, then uh, the barrier function is also an, an element of N. And I don't have time to describe this, this four thing. Um, so, as I mentioned before, uh, David and uh, Joan. Oh, that's the obvious one. The exactly. Uh, David and Joan, they, they introduced this forcing for kappa equals 2 omega. And the main difficult, well, Im imagine that you want to, to generalize this idea from, um, from kappa equals to omega to any kappa. What's the main difficulty? The main difficulty is that you have to be able to define a barrier function. But in, if kappa is equal to omega, this is quite easy because all the conditions they are finite. So essentially, you can you can put all 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 all, all the barriers together, and you, you still have something finite. But in the context, for instance, in the context of kappa equals to omega one, then uh, your approximation to the partial order is, is for instance something countable. So how 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 do you amalgamate? Uh, two different uh, two different orders <coughs> in order that you have fin finite barriers thank you okay questions how do you do it yeah oh. uh, what's the trick well the thing is ah uh, For instance, imagine that we want to argue properness. So you, you, you want to argue properness for, for, a, uh, for a certain model N. So you put N in the active part of, uh, of a condition. <coughs> yes? And then imagine that you extend this forcing. You have here some elements of the partial order that probably they don't li it doesn't live in N. But of course, this, uh, approxim this approximation is uh, small. So there is, um, an, um, there is something very, sim by, by, by correctness of N, there is something very similar here. So the I imagine that the order type of, of, of the or the or imagine that the order type of all these guys is a certain, uh, number pi. Pi is, of course, below 
than kappa. So by correctness, we have something very similar here. We have an approximation to the partial order also of, ta of type uh, pi, and in such a way that there is an isomorphism between these elements here and these elements here. And now we have to amalgamate these two partial orders. Imagine that this is the, the second partial order, and this is the first partial order, the, the partial order that we can see in N. So we have, of course, some um, amalgamation uh, lemmas for partial orders. And uh, this is quite technical. So the, 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 the main idea is amalgamating par partial orders and using the idea of uh, you, you have uh, re regressive, uh, regressive functions. We are not regressive here in this context. We are pro progressive. <laughs> uh, you, uh, if you have pro progressive means that f alpha beta has to be equal to, in general, we will have access to, the, to this coordinate alpha because it lives in kappa. But probably you don't have access to, to this coordinate beta, which lives in kappa plus plus. <coughs> so this beta has to be, the image has to be alpha beta prime, where beta prime is at least beta. And it has to fix, of course, the, the, the it has to, to fix the intersection of, 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 of these two partial orders. Using this isomorphism um, is, and with some work, uh, you, you, you can amalgamate everything. More questions? Uh, in his original book, Scheller used the delta function to guarantee the CCC of certain forcing. Is it true that, or not, it's unknown, that your forcing also introduced a delta function for higher cardinals? Sorry, I don't have any idea of what a delta okay, function is. Okay, <laughs> I just forgot about that. It's too complicated somehow. Uh, yeah, yeah, that's why I don't know. <laughs> Do omega omega three? Uh, not yet. How, how about uh, alpha bigger than omega two but less than omega three? Oh, I have Is it usually not so? I mean, easy to go from kappa to any alpha less than kappa plus. I mean, in this case. Yes. Uh, in fact, Bill say that most probably we uh, were very close. We're very close to also to the result. Uh, you think you can, you I, I can think do I it for exactly. all our power, size, yep. Papa double. Yeah. Comments? No? Okay. No, let's thank uh, Yvanka again. Thank you. Huh?